A downward compressor like Logic Pro 10's compressor provides the ability to set a threshold at which, if that threshold is passed, a waveform can be compressed so as to avoid excessive dynamic range in a song. To exemplify this for you, I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to add an external MIDI, which is hooked up to my keyboard. And I'm going to add an ES2 synthesizer. Now I'm going to record some MIDI. So we know that there are different volume levels. I'm going to change the velocity on each of those four notes. I'm also going to quantize those notes to quarter notes. Now I will add Logic Pro 10's compressor to this track. To explain what's going on, I'm going to turn down the ratio first, turn off the auto release, change the compressor threshold to peak, turn off the auto gain, and reduce the knee. The compressor threshold represents a specific level of dBs in the waveform that once passed, compression will be applied. When the threshold is met, the degree to which that compression is applied is controlled by the ratio. On this graph, we can see the point at where the threshold is set and how changing the ratio affects the dBs that are output relative to the dBs that came in through the input. Since you may not want a hard switch in compression, the knee parameter allows you to gradually apply compression around the threshold you already specified. You can see in the graph how it changes the curve around that point where that threshold is set. Let's see how changing the compressor threshold changes the gain reduction. As we lowered the threshold, we saw the gain reduction increase. To learn more about these parameters, let's take a look at a waveform. I'm going to go ahead and do this by creating a new audio track and setting the input as bus 1. And then I'm going to send the output of our original MIDI track to bus 1 so that I can record and that MIDI will be turned into audio and we can take a look at the waveform. Then I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that audio track many times so we can s compare the different waveforms against one another after we change parameters. I just recorded our initial MIDI without any compression. Now I'm going to turn on our compressor and record again. Also, I'm going to go ahead and increase that threshold a little. And for a bass, I'm going to reduce the attack, reduce the release, and reduce the gain to zero. Now I'll go ahead and increase the attack to 10 milliseconds and I'll record to the next track. Now I'll change the threshold again and record once more. When we look at the top and bottom waveforms, the top was our original MIDI and the bottom is the MIDI with compression applied to it. On the top, we can see each note is increased in loudness, where on the bottom, each note caps out at the threshold level we set in the compressor. The third waveform shows when we increase the attack to 10 milliseconds, which means the compression effect isn't reacting until after 10 milliseconds. The release parameter, on the other hand, relates to how long till the compression is removed once the threshold is no longer being met. For the attack in this example, we can see slightly higher loudness in the waveform in the first 10 milliseconds of each note being played. Changing the attack can be a great way of keeping a little bit of dynamism in the sound without compromising the overall sound level of the track. 
in the fourth waveform, we reduced the threshold, and we can see how it certainly lowered the overall level of each note. However, this visualization continues to show how setting the attack at 10 milliseconds affects the first 10 milliseconds of each note being struck with, when the threshold is met. Downward compression is a dynamic effect that you'll likely want to use on every track. This has been a 5-minute summary of the basic parameters in Logic Pro 10's compressor.